Okay, how's everyone doing out there? I am doing great. I hope everyone's doing well. Obviously, like I mentioned, I've been playing around with this data for a while. Uh, we're going to be doing a graph of dichotomous variables using the Titanic Survival. Now, as everyone knows, you install the package ggplot. I've already done it, but then you get the library out. And remember, when you install anything, you have to use quotes. When you do it with the library, basically it's already there, so you don't need quotes, but when you install, make sure you use quotes. It is the install packages, not installed. I've screwed that one up too. Uh, install. So basically that's what we're doing. Now I've already run this. If we look at the summary, of this data, it's basically already done. We talked about this a while ago, how essentially sex, male and female, that is gender with the two attributes, male and female, was significantly, well, statistically speaking, significant, but now we're gonna see it in a chart. And remember, that's a chart because I'm from Massachusetts. So basically, we're going to see how it is in this chart. So what are we going to use? We're going to use ggplot. Now, I use charts before and other types of graphing. And I use just like in the mosaic, I just use simple whatever the uh, R has. And R has really good default stuff, but sometimes you want to get the packages because the packages not only enhance your ability to do things, but sometimes they can just be easier. And I think this case of dichotomous variables is quite easy with ggplot. So we're just going to do it simply, and then I'm going to send you out a cheat cheat sheet. That's what it's called, cheat sheet on ggplot and see if you want to enhance yours, et cetera. But for the final paper, you can just use a nice plot like this and it actually has nice colors, et cetera. So you basically just want, well, commonsensically, ggplot. And we are gonna use what? Because I've been playing around with different data. We have the Titanic, but this is Titanic survival up here. And we're going to essentially use a different Aesthetics, and that's what it's called. As we see, first we do the G, G, the geom bar, and we're using bars because it's bar. And it's interesting, just let me digress. They have other geos uh, that I was playing around with, but it doesn't look good with this. But you basically have different, there was like a, a, these different, yeah, that was what I used, tried dot plots that makes it look dots, it didn't work well. But a geo uh, bar is perfect for this one. And the thing that's going to be in this is going to be aesthetics. This is aesthetics, A-E-S. So essentially, we're going to see the aesthetics. And what are we first using? That's the question. The X equals the dependent variable in this case, because we're going to see it at the bottom. And you're going to see exactly. So it survived. And as you can see, I already recoded it one to zero again. That's good practice. And in, in the case of ggplot, what's interesting for me, we're going to fill it. We're not just going to leave it like X. You actually fill with whatever variable you want. So here we're going to take the independent variable sex. So we're going to basically fill this with... Yay, sex. So what do we get? Well, that is what we get. And that's a pretty nice bar chart for those simple steps. So what do we see here? Well, we can see the zero obviously is not surviving. That's the male, which is light blue. And then the female, now that's arbitrary, obviously. If it was reverse, it would be, you know, a female pink, man, light blue, etc. But now we see the females. Wow, that's a significant, as we did the data, remember we saw that sex was a significant, where, where are we? Because I've been playing around with this. Uh, sex, you are less likely to survive and you get those three stars, p-value under 0 0.05. So you have the likelihood to basically die more. Chivalry will never die, I guess. Uh, men were allowing the women to get on the boats. Again, like I said before, if that was me, I'm egalitarian. 
I would have gotten on that boat, trust me. But anyways, that's not the point of my cowardness. The point here is to see how to do these plots. So you see it's significant, but then this bar chart really shows you significance, which is kind of interesting. So this is the survival. Look at all the women surviving and the men not surviving. And here, look at all the men dying and a smaller amount of female. Now, of course, there are other variables to look at, like how many women were there on the Titanic vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis men. But, you know, that's uh, not uh, the point here. The point here is just to do this simple bod shot, which actually looks pretty nice. And then, uh, obviously, uh, ggplot has a wide range of things you can do i'll just do really quick uh let's call it a title but the thing about ggplot that's different of r it'll have different things like as we did in another video the regular r is we call it main you know main equals and then that gives you the title uh i always have to check this one is called label label let's say survivor rate And you know, my spelling is terrible, so I hope that's right. So anyway, survivor rate. So then what we get here is, you know, survivor rate. So you can basically do something like that in your own um, final paper, and you can build on this. I just kind of wanted to do this quickly so people kind of know, oh, wow, that's a cool way to just build a simple chart now let's say for example i don't want to fill with sex let's say someone oh i'm doing another variable well here you go that's passenger class take a look here boom then you get three first second and third so as you can see wow look at the third class what a bunch of classist jerks so you basically get a huge i mean again we have to know the numbers but it seems like there's such a significance here by how many people in the in the third class second class and then first class and look at who survives you know the first class people are surviving at a higher rate uh anyone who says marxism is dead is completely incorrect because look at that i mean that's exactly how a lot of um life is and we're actually going to see this to be honest with you this is an interesting take doing passenger class we already did a while back if you remember we did the regression on this in the G, um in the glm now take a look at this uh survival rate now we just have the graphs and you know this is a classist society we live in and we're going to see this even right now with the coronavirus you know what what people get laid off uh during this time like say from these big liberal universities who are they going to go after like university of arizona has already said they're going to furlough their staff but are they going to furlough say faculty people who are more prestigious at the university it's always kind of like this i think life they always go after the people who are you know third class and as you can see the survival rate here is is is, is zero is not surviving look at the third who's not surviving and here you see a bigger survival rate of the first class so even if the numbers were way off as just regular quantities just just raw descriptive data you can see here that you know people in the first class definitely survived and they basically threw the, the people of the third class overboard i mean is that what we're going to start seeing which is interesting i know this is a complete aside but is this how the world is going to be when we start thinking about you know who to fire at big corporations universities etc during the coronavirus is it going to be a lot like this that would be at towards the not end of the coronavirus because i mean i don't think this is ever going to end uh, there all it'll always be with us now but the fact of the matter is who are these big corporations and university going to let go is it going to be the first class or is it going to be the third class that's a very interesting question that would be great to do a graph on this on who who's who is furloughed or who is let go from these big quote unquote liberal universities and then you you basically create um this typology of class you know you put these people in first second third fourth and see and then you can run 
data on it to see who's been furloughed. Furlough, by the way, is when you get like reduced pay, you're forced to take like a, a six months off to six weeks. I mean, it can be anything. Uh, you know, University of Arizona is furloughing a lot of the staff, but are they furloughing the uh, 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 faculty? That's going to be interesting because you've got to hear, you know, liberal professors talk, but at the same time, how liberal are we? And this is very, very interesting. And here, I think this is something that stays with us forever is that the idea of class. So, and there are other um, variables. There's always race, there's always gender, there's always ethnicity etc but in this case class is very very interesting now i talked too long for that one but i thought it was a good aside for the crisis we're in and who's going to survive and who's not in this crisis and we might see something like this the first class surviving much better than the third class so i hope you enjoyed this lecture and my little tangent uh, <laughs> you might not like it at all but uh uh you know uh, about um the survival rate the titanic and of course, graphing with GG plot too. So best wishes to everyone, and I hope everyone stays safe, regardless of the class you are in. Take care, everyone.